Hello and this is the second episode of our series on effective traffic organizers. We are going to suggest six of them from Shikshangan and every teacher must practice this well enough so that they all become her friend regardless of the subject or the grade that you are teaching. So today we are going to be talking about another graphic organizer as we discussed yes in the last episode and we did the Venn diagram and now we are taking you through this graphic organizer of fish bone analysis. It is an analysis because you're trying to find out why did a certain thing happen? Why have you encountered a certain problem in life? What were some of the causes that could have led to this problem? And therefore, it's also known as a cause and effect diagram. Let us look at the first example that we have for you. The first example is an example from climate change, either in environment studies or geography, whatever. So. The, the central line that you have at the center of the screen is the, the spine of the fish, okay? the fish bone. If you eat fish, you know what an eaten fish bone looks like. And then at the head of the fish, you actually put the effect. In this case, the effect that we're talking about is climate change. What we are going to try to analyze through this fish bone diagram, also known as a cause and effect diagram, also known as the Ishikawa diagram. What we are going to try and analyze is what are some of the causes that actually lead to climate change. Like we know as teachers of geography and earth sciences, uh, there are some causes which are related to human activity and there are other causes which are related to earth activity regardless of whether humans did anything to the earth or not. Okay? So this is the way you first start by drawing the fish bone diagram. You draw the spine, put the effect at the head of the fish. Then you start listing the causes. So for example, there could be rising emissions, there could be because of certain things that are going wrong or changing in farming. Some, some causes are due to the deforestation. All of this is the human activity causes. Then there are other causes which could be probably alterations in the earth's energy balance itself, even though it will take millions of years for that to happen. And of course, the greenhouse effect. I'm not a geography teacher, but I'm just, I'm trying to tell you what a fish bone diagram should look like. So once you have these sub bones of the fish and they have their own headings, which is the main cause like rising emissions or greenhouse effect, you start adding the sub causes to each of this cause. So how does it look like now? So what you do therefore is for example, these are the sub causes of the rising emissions. Like you could see, I've already put down natural gas drilling, burning of coal, oil, etc. Similarly, I might put down some sub causes which are because of farming, the land grazing, the fertilizers in the night, you know, the nitrogen in the fertilizers, and so on. Similarly, what are the sub causes which has led to a lot of deforestation? So cutting of trees, etc., etc. So we're not really doing a lesson on climate change. We're doing a lesson on how do you create a fish bone analysis. Similarly, for the Earth's energy balance changes, we will put down other sub-causes like the ocean currents or the orbital changes. But mind you, these will take thousands of years to happen, but they're happening all right. So you need to put down these causes as well. Don't miss anything. And lastly, on my slide, I have the greenhouse effect. So as you can see, along the bones of the fish, you have all the causes and at the head of the fish, you have the effect. This is the fish bone diagram or the cause analysis diagram, cause and effect. Do not make a mistake of putting down anything else here. You choose this, to do this graphic organizer only when you're analyzing what are some of the causes leading to this effect. But one example is not enough and therefore I have another one for you. I have another one from history. Who doesn't know what the first war of independence meant for us as Indians? Okay? Well, they called it the, the first mutiny, Sepoy mutiny, but we like to call it the first war of independence. So now the effect is the 1857 war of independence. But what were some of the causes? Now, this was history. There are some economic causes. There was probably some social causes, some military causes, whatever you know of it. Even if you're not a history teacher, you have gone through this in your childhood when you were studying history. Then there were political causes and immediate cause. So there are always in history some long-term causes which are slowly boiling, 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 boiling like you can see now in the Russia-Ukraine war. And then there is an immediate cause which leads to the war. So you put down these causes first and then you start putting the sub-causes along the bones of the fish. 
So I'm not going to go into details of this. You can always take a screenshot if you like what I'm presenting. Okay, you can pause and take a screenshot. But these are some of the sub causes. Like they were Christian missionaries and therefore I've got that little cross there all over our country. And what was happening is it was creating some kind of a social disturbance. And then there are many other things in history which lead to a war. The military causes because they were far away from their home and they were unrest and they were unhappy. Then of course there were political causes. Who doesn't remember the doctrine of flaps? Who doesn't remember the Rani of Chasi and the Dalhousie Act? You will probably be recalling all of this as you're listening to my video. Don't think it's too academic. We will all know this. This is the history of a country which we need to know. But I am not teaching you history. What am I teaching you? How to do a fish bone analysis. Hmm? Cause and effect diagram. And of course, favorite Amir Khan as Mangal Pandey. And we know the you know biting off of the cartridge and so on. So along the bones of the fish, we have the causes, as you can see, grouped according to their nature. And then the head of the fish has got the effect. One last one to drive my point home, okay? So this is something general, which could be probably resonating with everyone. The poverty that we are facing in our nation and worldwide. So what are some of the causes of poverty? Again, there are historical causes, just like there are in war, okay? And there are some current causes. So we need to put one at one side of this diagram. Start listing what are some social causes which are historical and group them, the sub-causes. What could be some educational causes? See, my headings are changing. Okay? And group them. Okay? What? Because there was no, there's no opportunity given to uh, the underserved communities in our country, possibly, and that leads to poverty. It's changing. We are trying to make free and compulsory education, but probably we're not reaching the last mile. Okay? Then there is concentration on of wealth in a few hands. If you have seen my shorts, I have been talking about the Peritos principle, 80-20 rule. 80% of the people of the wealth in the world is held in the hands of 20% of the people. Obviously, it will lead to poverty. These are historical causes. And the political causes, because there's corruption, there's vote bank politics, they try to a lot of people are kept poor, kept illiterate for the votes, and we know all of that history that we have. And that's there all over the world. Then the current causes. What about agricultural production? They're probably losing their farms. They, they don't have the capital, they don't have investments that they can make, so they're banking on traditional methods, etc. And the last one I've got for you here is the population explosion, of course. So whopping 2.2% per annum, but in the last 45 years, look at the kind of growth that we have had in our people. But you also know that we are doing very well now in India. We have almost sort of replicated the rate of, product, of reproduction. So that's something that I wanted to show you about what a fishbone analysis looks like. Fishbone analysis or cause and effect diagram or the Ishikawa diagram. That was the second graphic organizer I wanted to talk about. Okay? If you like what I'm presenting through our YouTube channel at Chikchangan, do like and subscribe and also tap the bell. That will help us bring you new episodes every week. Thank you for being with us.